morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm glad that you're so excited this morning to answer my good morning. Good morning to all of you at home as well or watching us over Facebook. We were having some audio difficulties, so um, if the audio stops, I'll try to do sign language. Maybe you guys will get... No, I won't do that, but thank you to uh, Sydney and Evelyn. They're working on the sound, and I think we are now ready and uh, running smooth right now. So again, good morning to all of you. The announcements are here in the back of the program. We're going to go through just a few that are important for this Sunday is the team Bible study. Remember what I said two weeks ago? Right there at that corner, that's the core cadets. Once they come, they're going to sit there. So y'all better not sit there because this is, this is our corner. Uh, is that right? One day, I'm just going to remove that whole back row right there, and it's going to confuse you all. I'm going to be like, what is our seats? Where's our seats? So I'm glad, I'm glad that each one of you guys are here, and uh, we'll have Cork Cadet lessons after the church today, and then we're going to go in the outing. Um, we also uh, see that the uh, DHQ, the Division Headquarters, is having a virtual high school and college Bible study. If you want to sign up for that, please talk to Mr. Sidney. Youth councils are coming. That's for uh, teens 14 and old. Um, so, Quirk Cadets, we, we hope that you will consider attending youth councils. We would love to have you there. And then we have men's and women's ministries on September 21st. Um, another important event that's coming up is uh, Territorial Youth adult retreat that's going to be in Atlanta again if you are a young adult listen if you are 42 like me you no longer a young adult okay hint hint so don't try to go um, and then you see the last thing is can you go back to that first slide um, is that Alex Alexander can you go back to the first slide all all the way the other way around yes so we have our Port Charlotte Family Camp uh, coming up. That's going to be October 29 to 31. We booked the whole camp just for us. Okay, so we, there are a lot of COVID precautions in place. So the whole campground is just for us, Port Charlotte. And we we'll like for you, for your family. And listen to what I'm saying. This is not just for church folks. This is for our families. This is for anybody that want to have a time to enjoy the campground, get to know people, pray with each other, maybe even share their struggles with each other. But it will be a time for us to re, you know, disconnect for a moment. We're going to have Majors um, Henrys and Benita Morris as our special guests for the, for the weekend. And our theme is victory. Victory in Jesus, victory in your life, victory over our problems. You know, there's a lot that can, uh, victory maybe look different to each one of us. So we really encourage you to take a moment to ask for more information, put in your calendar. Uh, you know, later on, we're going to come up with pricing. If you have trouble paying when we have the price set in stone, please come and talk, talk to us. We don't want anybody to not go because they're not able to pay. You, you listening? If you don't have a way to pay, don't, don't, don't disconsider. Just come to us, talk to us. We want as many of you there and your families, okay? Um, with that, I will be moving to the call to worship. And in the meantime, I'll ask the praise band to make their way to the stage, please. Uh, call to worship. Uh, can you go back, brother, to the call to worship on the slide, please? So the call to worship will be in your program. So how about that? Call to worship. I am the leader, and you guys are the response. Okay? So leader, God, you are calling. Gentle and patient. God, you are calling. In grieving and in praise, God, you are calling. Unexpected end plan, God, you are calling. Spontaneous and prepare, God, you are calling. Our God is eager to share with us, wherever we are in our journey, may we be diligent to listen. God, you are calling. And that's for... 
for us this morning. We're here today because we want to hear from God. Amen. So if you are able to, please stand and we're going to go uh, two songs in a time of worship. Pay attention to the words. Enjoy the momentum. Pray, you know, wherever the spirit leads you this morning. say well let me see. <laughs> we never took a picture of our food and put in the envelope and saying and said look what I ate today hashtag healthy <laughs> you know we never did that but now like when we go to restaurants you know it's so common that like the food comes and the first thing that we do is and then we eat like if it was a requirement for us to take a picture of our food can you imagine, like, tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to start texting some of you. Here's my bread and my coffee, and I'm going to text you tomorrow morning, Miss Lola. Hashtag God provided. <laughs> then, can you imagine, I'm just going to start doing this every morning. 
And, you know, but this is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is not looking at appearance. The Lord is not looking if my uniform is clean and is, you know, if I, my shirt has a crease. The Lord is not looking for that. The, not, the Lord's not looking to see if my shoe is, it, you know, if I use shoe shine this morning. The Lord's not looking at that. The, nor, the Lord's not looking if our, you know, if our hair is well done and if we smell good. The Lord's not looking for that. What he's looking at is people that's willing to serve him. No matter the way that you come. One of the conversations that I always like to have, especially with the younger people, is when they say, oh, I don't have any talents. Oh, I love to talk to them about that. Because it's like I have a goal to prove to them that they do have talents. But sometimes that happens to adults too. We think like, oh, no, the Lord cannot use me. I don't have anything good to bring to the Lord. And we see the example here with David. It's like, you know, he was the last one of the sons. He was the shortest one. You know, and Samuel the whole time was like, oh, it has to be this one. And the Lord said, no, it has to be this one. No. And said, hey, do you have any more? Uh, yeah, I have David. His on the field. Go get David. And the Lord said, that's the one. Anoint him. Bless him. This is the one that I want to use. So then we see that after all this, this wonderful moment, David just went back to the field to take care of the sheep. Can you imagine? Like you're just being anointed by the Lord, and you just go back, take care of the sheep. But then that changed. We see later that, uh, you know, he went from the, the taking care of the sheep to the king's court because he was requested to come and play music when King Saul was in trouble. And later we see the big story of Goliath and David. And we kind of know that story. Right? He picked the stones and he threw it and he killed the giant. He slaughtered his head. That's that David. But because of David's popularity, Saul became jealous of him and tried to kill him multiple times. But he couldn't. He wasn't able to. And because of that, David had to flee for, and hide from his life. He no longer could have been in the spotlight. But the thing is, David was a great king for Israel. He was able to unite rival tribes, protect the nations from the enemies. He brought the Ark of the Covenant. David was a man that listens to God and obeyed God, even though he also struggled. We see many of the Psalms, those are writings from David. He shares his joys, but he also shares where he struggles, some of the pain that he had, some of the confusion in his heart. And I think we can learn several things from this passage today. And now, you know, throughout this whole week, I was reflecting on it. And it was, you know, if you know me, you know that my, my imagination just goes and goes and goes. But I decided to, like, narrow down on two very important things that I, that I think that we can take for us this morning. You see, again... Samuel was impressed with Elab and said, like, this is the one. Great height, great appearance. This is the one. But this shows how deeply ingrained this society, even for strong believers, even for churches. Remember, not our church, the other church, okay? But even for churches... How much we look on the outside. How much we look at what people look in the outside. What they drive. What kind of behavior they have. What kind of clothes they wear. In one of our commands, there was a... Um, um, I'm, I'm not sure why this is funny for me, but it was. One of our commands that we had in the past, we used to have a gentleman that came to church dressed as a woman. And you could tell that he was, he was a male dressed as a woman. Every time that that gentleman came, I just loved it. Because it made a lot of people in our church uncomfortable. And I'm not sure why it's funny, but every time that he came, it was like, I hugged him, and it says, so great for you to be here. And he just said it, and you could tell people like, and for some reason, like, I was hoping that the Lord would use that for them to see that, you know, 
God is, is not a requirement for the, our neighbor to look like us. That's not a requirement. It's not a requirement for our neighbor to be, have the same cleanliness that we have. It's not a requirement for our neighbor to dress the same way that we dress. God loves him. Despite the fact that if I agree or don't agree on the way that he dressed and the life that he had it. That's not the point. And I think, he like, and I want to, uh, and I want to think that he knew that because he kept coming. And if you look in our society today, if you find a person that's part of a minority group, sometimes they will say, "Well, I don't go to church because the church does not accept me." That happens often. But that gentleman kept coming. We probably we spent four four years in that command. He was probably there for about maybe the last two years that we were there. And I talked to him. He never really opened up very much. He never really, like, you know, became really close to us. And probably because there was also this resistance. Maybe he was hurt in the past. I can understand that. But every time that he came, just hug him. I was happy to see him there. And there were times where it was like, sometimes I want to laugh for how people, like, and I was like, man, I wish we had like 10 of those. Just to see people like understanding this, what they think is not the right thing. You see, and that's what the Lord is saying here. Wherever preconceived ideas or we have of other people, that's not from God. That's from our human hearts. That's from our human minds. It's because we got so involved and it became so common that sometimes when things are so common, we think they are right. But the Lord has not called us to judge anybody by, based on their appearance, finances, family structure, color, language. The Lord has not called us to put them inside of a category. The Lord has called us to love them. I say it. And we often make those mistakes. We make friends with people that are popular. We're drawn by people's appearance and personality. And then on the other hand, we also work so hard to keep our image to other people to see. It's the whole idea of we invest a lot of our time and a lot of our energy to please people that we barely know and we sometimes don't even like. So let's not be deceived by appearance. It may not mean anything. We need to, do you really want to know if a person is a good person? It's like we love them and then we compare their actions with the word of God. And if you don't see that, don't discard them, don't judge them, but maybe guide them through a closer relationship with the Lord. I remember when I became a Christian for the first time. Well, I only became a Christian one time, so there we go. When I first became a Christian, you know, I remember that I was just so excited that, like, I became pretty much like a, a Christian inside of my bubble. I want all my friends to be Christians. You know, I want to listen to Christian music. I want, you know. And I remember that my, my school friends, most of them were not Christians, you know. And then one day they just, they, they start calling. They start making fun of me. It's like, are you the Pope now? Are you, uh, you know, are you a monk? Like, you don't talk to us anymore? And I was like. Well, that's true. You know, and I remember that I talked to my major, my, my pastor, my officer at that time, and he's like, no, you can't, forget the, you can't forget those, Israel. You have to witness to them. You have to point them in the right direction. Not with judgment. Not with this, it's like, oh, I can't believe you guys still drink. Or, oh, you smoke. But just go there and show something different. To show that you can have joy despite, even without some of those things of the world. You can have joy even when you have very little money in your pocket. And that's what I did. And, you know, and what the coolest thing is that most of my um, school friends, they end up coming to the Salvation Army back in Brazil. Uh, we used to have a, 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 a drama group that we performed throughout the different corps. They came. They, they saw the presentations. They know that, you know, I got married. They know I'm a pastor. Uh, and it is... It, it, 
right now it's not awkward anymore, but even in the beginning it was like, they will pop a beer and I was there, they was just like, oh. I was like, guys, it's okay. It's like, I'm not here to judge you. If you really want to, if you want to have a conversation about that, we can have a conversation. But it's like, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not going to say that you're going to go to hell because you're drinking your beer. And I think that was part of why we became so tight. And even when my family, um, my entire family, including my wife's family, we went back to Brazil three years ago. We had a great time. We had pizza. And, you know, and again, they know we don't drink. So they say, hey, Israel, we have soda for you. And it's like, that's great. I'll take that. But we can't get inside of this bubble and forget that there's people out there that may don't know what we know. And if you feel led to reach out to them, remember, not in a judgmental way, but in more of like, man, I honestly have an interest for you. Can we be friends? Can we get together? What is your struggle? Can I pray for you? Second, the fact that God often chooses the younger of all the brothers. This one made me, uh, there was this question in my mind, why? What can we learn from this? And I think that the way the Lord spoke with me is like, don't be discouraged if you think that you're less than others. Less money, less education. Maybe you consider yourself to be weaker or younger. Or for any other reason. You see, God is not just calling out the old and the pastor and the teachers. God is calling all of us. Even the weak. Even the young. Even the broke. And the fact that when we answer to God's call, even though we're, no, we're maybe not be capable... That's even better because we depend more on him. I think I shared, um, I shared with somebody a few weeks ago that the first time that I ever preached in my life, and you may have heard the story, I held on to the pulpit, and there was a camera in front of me. And I remember that my whole sermon was about maybe seven minutes, and I rushed through the whole thing. And I remember that I was so nervous that when I finished the sermon, you can see in the camera that my hands came out of the pulpit like this first. And then eventually I realized, and it's like, I could hear like, I almost could hear like, like, oh. And I remember that when I got home, if, listen, I'll tell the story. If you want a picture there in your mind, that's, that's on you, okay? But I remember that when I got home and I took my tongue off, I was so sweaty that my nipples were stuck to my shirt and you could see it. And I remember that I clearly, you know, I was already in seminary, it's like, and I remember like, talking to the Lord and said, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this whole, like, speaking in front of people, it's something that you're calling me. And I remember that I pray, and I pray, and I pray, and I still get nervous. Um, but the fact is, because I'm not super comfortable doing this, I require more dependence from the Lord. Really need my moment. I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes like the meeting's about to start and I'm not here. I'm going to tell you a secret. It's because like I always need to go to my office for a moment to pray. It's not because I don't like you. It's not because I don't want to shake hands with you when you come. It's because it's, it's the moment where I feel like, okay, Lord, you want to use me. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I'm too comfortable with that, but this is what you call me to do. And I need you to equip me. I need you to give me the right words. Because without you, I can't really, really do this. So there you go. Now you know my secret. The last two years, why you don't see me here um, the whole time between 10 and 11. You see, but the Lord wants to do the same thing with you. He wants to use you. Maybe you're saying, it's like, oh, Captain, you don't even know how I come to this church this morning, Captain. Like, I have so many problems in my life this morning. You know, I told you that before. Like, I hear this often when people say, it's like, oh, Captain, for me to go to church, first I need to fix some things in my life. Then I'll go to church. And I will say to you, it's completely the opposite. 
You come to church the way that you are. You come to a relationship with the Lord the way that you are. And the Lord will help you to adjust, to remove, to add some things to your life. It's not the all the way around. This is not like swimming that you have to learn how to swim so you can jump in the pool. For that, I would say, yes, you have to learn first so then you can jump. But in this case, it's the opposite. It's like you come with your baggage. You come with your problems. You come with wherever is bothering you. And then you believe that he is able. Because he's not looking at your appearance or my appearance. He's looking at our hearts. And he's looking for people that's going to say, you know, and I hope you remember this. And I hope that you can also make sense of this in your own life when you say, you know, this area of my life for Captain was speaking. This is the area for my life that I can look back and see, oh man, I, I didn't think that I could ever do this. But I did because I trusted him. Because he's able to do much more than we could ever imagine. So this morning, I'll ask Colonel if you uh, can play a tune for us. And then I want to uh, invite you, you know, to think about those two very important points of this morning. We don't need to be looking at the exterior of people. You know, maybe you have somebody in your mind this morning that you're, as, as you listen, as you think, you have a person that's like, man, I really have not connected to this person. I have not forgiven this person. I have not supported this person because of my ideas of what he or she could be. Oh, I don't like the way that he dressed, she dressed, the way that he talks, she talks. And I'll ask you, if that's you this morning, I'll ask the Lord for forgiveness and ask the Lord for strength for you to be able to forgive, for you to be able to reach out to that person with the right heart and say, hey, Forgive me, because I thought this of you. But I want to be free. I want to let you know because I want to be free from that. Or maybe it's the second point. You were, you know, so concerned about putting up this image and you're not letting anybody come inside of your life. Well, I don't want the person to know that I have imperfections, that I have sin. Let me tell you, we all have imperfections. We all have areas that we need to work on. And part of you letting the Lord work on is the first, the first thing is to admit. And say, Lord, I don't think I can do by myself. You know, I've been holding on to this thing for months, years. I want to let go of this. I want people to be able to know me for who I am. Not for my Instagram pictures. Not for my perfect family that I picture to be. For who I am. So if the Lord is speaking with you today, you know, pray in your seat. If you want to come here to the altar, pray here on the altar. Will my wife or I, or we have some other soldiers at the church, will pray for you. But if the Lord is speaking with you this morning, don't just say, like, oh, you know what? I can't always wait until next Sunday. I don't need to commit today. So if the Lord is speaking with you today, then answer and say, Lord, here I am. I heard something today. To the message, to the songs, to the prayers that touch my heart. And I want my life to be different. And when you bring to the Lord... Just leave it there. Leave it there and believe that he is able. Amen? So as the music plays, if the Lord is speaking with you today, make a decision. Visit with him.
as, uh, you know, we, we clapped for the glory of the Lord. Is that right? We clap for the glory of God and how he loves us and he looks at each one of us. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you. We give you all the glory and the honor. We say thank you. Uh, your love is so great for us. You know what's deep down in our hearts. You know the secrets of our mind. You know our past. And you love us still. Lord, help us to keep holding on to you. Lord, help us to keep looking to you. God, thank you for calling us each to you. Lord, help us to look at others the way that you look at us too. Help us to look at others with your unfailing love. God, thank you for choosing us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for working on us. Lord, I pray for our congregation. I pray for our church family, all the members that are here, our members that are sick and weren't able to be here, God, or are traveling and aren't able to be here. Lord, you know we miss them and we love them. Lord, continue to work in our lives, continue to work in their lives with your salvation, blood, and your Holy Spirit. God, thank you for how great you are. Thank you for choosing us. Let us not let go of you, Lord. Remind us when our fingers are letting loose of your hand. Remind us and draw us back to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord and feel his goodness with us? Right? Feel his goodness. Feel his warmth. What we have today, our closing song is um, a Salvation Army song. We sing this, and it is something we kind of get, get all our spirits up, get our moving around, okay? Um, we know in the Salvation Army, we say soldier, a member of the church, but really, we are all soldiers of the Lord. We all have a calling to fall our Savior, right? So this is the first verse of the song. March on, salvation soldiers, march forward to the fight. With Jesus as our leader, we'll put the foe to flight. In spite of men and devils, we will raise our banner high. For the day of victory's coming by and by. Right? So when we sing this song, we stand up. Because it kind of moves us, kind of gets us ready to go out those doors and conquer the world for Jesus. Okay, kind of gets us ready to walk out those doors knowing we stand in victory. Gets us ready to go out those doors and say, I had my hell down low, but now I hold my head up high because of Christ. Let's sing verse 1 and our chorus. March on salvation soldiers, march forward to the fight. With Jesus as our leader, we'll put the foe to fly. together um let us read it together hell's forces may be mighty a strong opposing band yet never be discouraged for jesus boldly stand with blood and fire will conquer for every foe divide for the day of victory's coming by and by do you stand true to that in your heart okay remember never be discouraged We'll stand boldly for Jesus. Let's sing that last verse together. Though some would try to crush us, we're rising every day. The sooner of every land and sea. Our flag we shall sway, salvation free to all men. For the day of victory is coming by and by. We skipped a line there. It's okay. The day of victory. Coming, tis coming.
to us for our benediction. When I started coming to the Salvation Army, I thought the benediction was the last prayer of the meeting and you got to go home when it was over. Graduated high school, they had a benediction, got to go home, right? Baccalaureate, benediction, get to go home. That's not what the benediction is. Um, I learned that the benediction is a blessing for you that we send you home with to have for the week. And I used to think, gosh, God always gives me the right thing to tell the people the truth is, I could pick any benediction I want to. It would go along because it's all the same message of how much God loves us. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So today's benediction is from Ephesians chapter 3, 17, 19. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Have a nice week. See you next week. Okay. Praise God.